All right, so we have successfully configured our AWS CLI. Now our task is to access DynamoDB with our AWS CLI. But before that, let's go ahead and understand what is this DynamoDB. Click on here, this DynamoDB. A DynamoDB is here a NoSQL database. All right, let's go ahead and see details of DynamoDB here. You have Amazon DynamoDB, it is a fast and flexible, uh, it is a fast and uh, flexible NoSQL database services for all application that need consistent and etc, etc, etc. So you can create a AWS DynamoDB, uh, AWS DynamoDB table from here, a console itself. But to just avoid this AWS uh, console, uh, access we had already added our uh, AWS CLI so we'll be doing that one just for your reference I'm uh, explaining you what is this DynamoDB a DynamoDB is no SQL database where we can store the information like we store in like we store in SQL and MySQL all right so these are the some process how we can do like we will be first creating here a table and thereafter we will be putting some data on our AWS table and uh, thereafter we can get the access of those data from the AWS. All right. So currently we do not have any table at the AWS. Otherwise we might have seen there. All right. So we do not have any table at the AWS. That is why it is happening. I think I have to also uh, log in perhaps. Just a second. All right, so it is getting logged in. And uh, then you need to again type there a DynamoDB. Uh, I do not have any table, so you will not see there any table. All right, so what we are going to do here, we are going to create a table, a DynamoDB table with AWS CLI. Let's go ahead and search here a terminal. So here I'm using iTerm, all right. So let's go ahead and open this uh, terminal. All right, so there I have here uh, my terminal. Thereafter, uh, let me do one more thing. I have to do here this Conda deactivate. Uh, you don't need to run this one because I had here a uh, Conda base activated. That is why I did that one. Let's go ahead and clear it. All right. Now let's go ahead and uh, enter in AWS cell mode. So we can simply do it with AWS cell mode. Perhaps that was stored in uh, in base. That is why it is not coming here. So what I can do uh, that was actually installed in base. That is why it is coming. All right. So base is activated once again. Now we can get it. All right, so what I did earlier, I had installed it in a new environment, which was a base environment. That is why when I deactivated that, I was not able to access. All right, so I have got it, AWS there. Let's go ahead and create our DynamoDB table. So AWS is already there. As soon as I type there, AWS, create table and etc. If you notice there, those things are being suggested now if you press the tab all right so you will see there this dynamo db is selected but do remember tab do not work every time so we have to select something like this one so we have here a dynamo uh, sorry i hit the enter so here aws dynamo db thereafter you need to click on here this create table now if you notice all these things are being here uh, the suggested all right and these are the some most suggestion which we can utilize so we have here a create table thereafter we need here this table name all right so there we have a table name sorry uh, don't hit the enter so by mistake i am doing the enter that is why that is coming so the table name here and uh, i'm going to provide this table name as the contact Thereafter, I'm going to provide here the attribute definition. We need the attribute if definition because uh, we have to tell our, uh, uh, sorry, this should be the attribute. All right. 
so we need this attribute definitions because we have to tell that what are the tables uh, sorry what are the columns in our table which we are going to create in the table all right so in the contact uh, in in the contact information i'm going to create here name and uh, email so for that one what i'm going to do i'm going to provide attribute definitions and then attribute name all right so you have to provide the here attribute like do you notice here that this is attribute name all right so there we have here attribute name and uh, in those attribute name i'm providing here the first one is name all right in a small letter thereafter a comma and then i'm gonna provide here attribute type so what type of the attribute we are going to use here and uh, that attribute we are going to use as a string all right so this is attribute name and thereafter we have here attribute type and in that we are providing here s that's mean this is a string all right and then another attribute name and in that i'm going to provide here email all right and then once again there is a comma and uh, then i'm going to provide here this attribute type so what attribute type we are going to do here that is s that's mean this is a string thereafter i need here a key schema all right so this is a key schema and uh, in that i'm going to say that here attribute name all right so attribute name is equal to i'm going to provide here the name one all right so that is going to be a key here and uh, key type then it asks about what is going to be a key type so i'm going to say here a key type is has key type all right so this is only key there a name is key only all right otherwise you can also provide here email is also key so because um, name could be you know email is always unique but uh, name so could be a duplicate all right perfect thereafter we have done it let's go ahead and run it it might take a time it says that it has some error there it says that error parsing parameter attribute definition uh, expected second received none all right let me see where this error is coming uh, let me make it in a full screen so in the there is attribute definition then it has attribute name and uh, then it ask about the attribute type i think i had provided there as space so that could be the error so there we have attribute type without any space all right then after a space we have here attribute name is equal to you know the email then attribute type that is s and other things are okay perhaps all right so it says that one more error if you notice uh, and uh, this error it is saying that read capacity unit and write capacity unit is not defined and uh, these are important because these are needed while billing so we have to provide these so we are going to say here this provisioned throughput so provisioned throughput says that how much uh, how much speed we need for reading this table and writing it so i'm going to say that here this provisioned throughput that's there is read capacity and there is units in this i'll be needing only one all right thereafter i also need here write capacity units and there i also need one so with this once you create it it says that read capacity unit is uh, one uh, once again all 
all right so one more thing we have missed here uh, number of key schema um, in our attribute definition and key schema is not matching so we have to also match that all right that means uh, we have already made for attribute name there uh, sorry email uh, it's a name and uh, then the another one we have to also provide here all right the attribute name with a space so there we have this attribute name is equal to here i have uh, email all right and uh, in this email i'm gonna also provide this key type is equal to has to remember you don't need to provide any space otherwise there will be an error all right now it should run i mean we have tried it three four times and once again it says that a second key schema element is not a range key type that's mean the second one should not be has we need that uh, as a range all right so now do you notice here one thing we had mentioned output type as a table that is why we are getting this very beautiful output otherwise it might have came like a garbage or like a json data so we have got the information table is created and this is a table description in that there is no item in the table and this is a table arn all right access resource number and there is a table id and then we have a table name is contact table is space uh, sorry table status is that this table is being created and total size taken by this table in aws database is zero byte and apart from that these are the attributes and this is email and name if you remember we had provided the attribute type which was a uh, string and key schema it says that we have a name and email there is has and range and these are the provisioned throughput all right perfect so it says that read capacity units is one and write capacity units is there one perfect superb now let's go ahead and verify it and we only we need to reload it now we should see here that one table is created which is named as contact all right now uh, let me see it is created it should be created where it is all right and there if you click on this tables there you see this contact is creating uh, contact is created if you click on this contact you will see the whole information about the table which we just created from our aws cli these are the items we don't have any items here but we will add later these items in the next lesson so let's go ahead and add these items in the next lesson